What is up guys, Tony here, and today we're doing a demo, tutorial, and review of Twixter for Final Cut Pro 10. This is actually a release that came out earlier in the year 2012, and I had no idea it happened, but now it's pretty much everyone knows about it, and I'm a little late to the, uh, to the update here, but it's amazing, uh, considering the fact that you can actually get uh, the pixel motion that is pretty much the pinnacle of what everyone uses in the movie film editing industry, Twixter. Um, usually you have to use Optical Flow on Final Cut Pro, which isn't that bad. Um, in fact, in my use, I've noticed that Twixter is not really that much better than Optical Flow, on Final Cut Pro at least. Uh, but overall, it is definitely a little bit better, um, and you'll notice that in a lot of uh, fast motion clips. So I'm going to use one of uh, one of my clan member, ESP Duza. Uh, one of his clips for his intro here, so you're kind of getting a sneak peek at that. Should be done soon. And uh, basically, I'm going to take it in here, and I'm going to show you guys how to Twixter. So, we're going to use the zoom in here as an example. So just like with Optical Flow, you're going to cut the part you want. So let's use this part right here, just right up to there. And let's say we want to do some super-ass slow motion. Now what I recommend doing is let's say you have a song in here. And you know that right about here is where you want the shot to happen. I recommend uh, having a marker for that shot. Or that part of the song. Going ahead and hitting uh, Command R on the clip. That pulls up your retimer. And stretching it out to where that shot is on the music. This is my way of using Twixter efficiently. And remembering that number. Then hitting Z. Turning off the retimer. Going into your effects. Going to Revision Effects, dragging Twixter onto the clip. And what you're going to do is you're going to pull up your inspector, you hit this I here, if you don't already have it up. And you're going to take the speed and you're going to remember that number, and that number was 14%. So you're going to hit 14 there. And you're going to notice your clip didn't stretch out. That's because it's just creating this part of the clip. This, this portion of the clip is at 14%. But when you stretch it out to that point that you wanted it at, it'll show the whole clip in the smooth, smooth Twixter pixel motion. Now, I don't like how this works. Um, I liked Optical Flow, where you would take a certain portion and then stretch it out, and then you choose Optical Flow. Uh, but for some reason, Twixter decides to keep the clip segmented to the size that fits in that portion. And the reason why it does that is because it's an effect. They can't do the sort of multi-level programming that Apple did in their program so it stretches out and things like that. Uh, maybe in the future they'll find a way to do it and they'll improve on it, but that's how you have to do it for now. And it works. That's my tactic to do it. I'm sure a lot of people don't know that tactic as well. I think it works perfect. And it's seamless. It makes it a lot easier. And when you let it render out, you'll see you get that Twixter pixel motion. Now, as you can see, it's kind of choppy. Uh, I think the reason for that is because I didn't optimize my footage. That you know, remind remind you real quick, you're supposed to transcode your media every time you bring it in. I didn't transcode this media yet, but it is pretty smooth, a little warpy. Like I said, it's not perfect. Um, so my review for it, I think that if you're going to be paying for it, um, you better have a damn good reason, because in all reality, it's not worth the full value um, for what it does, because Optical Flow does as good of a job, if not, I'll show you right now, We'll go right here, do the same exact procedure, choose the same exact area of the clip if my Final Cut won't lag. All right, let's go to 14% or whatever it was. We'll even bring it up to 14. And we'll hit Optical Flow. And we'll let that render in the background while we talk. Um, it, doesn't do, it doesn't do as good of a job as Optical Flow in some situations, but sometimes it does better than Optical Flow. So it's sort of an iffy thing. Um, so, in all reality, I think that for how much it is, it's not really worth it. But if you're the type of guy who is really invested into editing and does a lot of film and makes a lot of money from it, and you do edits and things like that, and you charge for them, I would recommend investing the money. It's an investment into a business. But if you are not that type of guy, if you're just a guy who does it for fun, freelances on the side, uh, it is not worth the massive amount of investment. Um... A few things that are better than than uh, than optical flow with it, I've noticed, is it renders quicker. You can tell that right now. It's taking longer to do the optical flow rendering. Um, but it does take longer to set up and make it work right. So 
as you can see, optical flow is similar. The only difference in optical flow is there's a lot more war warping on the gun. But at the end there, it's smooth. It's nice and smooth. But there is a little bit more warping. So that's really the biggest difference between Final Cut and optical flow. Um, but yeah, if, if you if you really hate the warping and it bothers you that much about optical flow, yeah, it's probably worth getting Twixter. But it is a lot of money to spend, which is why, as always, everyone decides to go the route of torrenting, which is, you know, completely fine. It's cool. Uh, I don't endorse it or anything, but it's cool. It's, it's a legitimate way of doing things. That's fine. And uh, yeah, so that's my review and tutorial on how to use Final Cut Pro's Twixter uh, plugin. You can find it on Revision's uh, website, or you can find it on uh, any other website you decide to find it on. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm Tony, and I'll see you guys next time.